Flory Models, I'm Philip Flory. Uh, busy week this week, we've been cracking on massively with Intruder. We've had loads of orders come in, apologies if orders are late going out, taking a day or two a bit longer, just purely because of the amount of orders we've got coming through at the moment. Um, welcome to all the new subscribers, we seem to have a bit of a surge at the moment, probably time of year and it's horrible weather and everything else. So you're joining us, remember use your um, same real name as you log in with to get into the forum as well. You do need to register as well. A few of you getting a bit confused with that one and also coming in with uh, nicknames and things like that to the forum while well, we don't accept those. So use your real name and it just speeds up the process a lot, a lot easier. Otherwise what happens is it pings me a message and then by the time I get to it, so forth and so on. Remember, uh, we're losing a lot of subscribers, although we're not. What it is, is your credit cards are um, out of date. So if you're on a yearly, which a lot of you are with this case, what happens is PayPal just comes along like it normally does to recharge your credit card again for that for this year. And then obviously it can't because your card isn't on file. It then cancels your subscription. And then um, what happens is it then sends me an email. It sends you an email. Then I give you sort of seven days to sort yourself out. In that seven days, if you just resubscribe, follow the link. There's a, a handy little link that you'll see in the email from me. Um, check your spam box as well. A lot of them are going into spam. If you see that, just subscribe and it will auto update your payment system and put your card uh, and it knows it and everything else like that. So that's a simple way. It's all fully automated uh, and just takes care of it. So it won't even shoot you an email. It just You'll know everything will carry on working and everything else. But a lot of you have said panic. I'm not cancelling. I don't know what's happening. That's all it is. It's just your card's expired um, and then obviously it can't anything to charge to it so what it does it cancels it but it's not cancelling your subscription it's cancelling your subscription but it's not cancelling your membership because only I can cancel your membership here okay so don't panic too much because I know a lot of you said look ah, I didn't do anything it's not me okay don't worry you it gives you about two weeks to sort it out before you'll lose anything here at Flory Models anyway so, cracking on with the intruder, um, as I said, I wanted to get the parts up, but as a lot of you know, internet isn't our strong point at the moment, although they are putting in the fiber optic just down the bottom of this row. They've got a new thing and it says, you know, yeah, really excited. I know that is so sad that I'm getting excited, but trust me, when you have internet like we have, you know, 25 hours to upload this, you know, I think it'd be better on dial up, would be quicker. In fact, I think it's about the same speed. Anyway, uh, because of that, I was a little bit slower getting the parts up. So we've actually got parts uh, 9, 10, and 11 went up this week. So you've got, what, um, an hour and a half of intruder footage up there, which gets you actually to this. Because to be honest, after I finish this, I'll go off and edit it, do the bits and pieces, and then I'm going to get going in the spray bay. So what we actually did, you can see up here, is re-rivet the entire top side of this thing. We also had to re-rivet everywhere around the front here because we lost a lot of the riveting detail. Um, I cover it quite in depth about how I do it, about using the sawtooth method uh, for lining it up and we talk about MDC's re-riveting tools, the fours and against with it and things like that um, and really get ourselves through. So what's really nice is we've got this done, we've got the undercarriage here is all completed and finished. We've added um, brake lines and hydraulic lines and everything else down there. I've also done grease staining on it, which is something I don't normally do, but everything is complete and ready for painting. And we're saying the beauty about this particular model is, and the camo work we're doing, is because the entire underside is white. Well, so is everything else. So, so is the wheel base. So we don't have to worry about masking up then. We can paint it all in one. Then we can mask it up and we can get that light gold gray right the way over this one to really bring it to life. As soon as we got that done, we'll get it out of the spray bay, bring it back here, and then we can start to put it together, okay? Get it decalled, and then what we're gonna do is obviously install the engines, the bits and pieces, all gotta go in there, and then we can come back in with further weathering and make our way through. But really, it's not that far off. It's all in little sub-assemblies, absolutely everywhere, waiting to go. So as soon as we get the paintwork done, we can actually start bunging it together and really pushing on with it. Then we're into the Iwo Jima. So I expect this one will be another probably three three, maybe four parts of this still to go. Um, so that's gonna take us the next sort of fortnight. But from my point of view, I hope to have this one completely finished and built by mid next week so I can carry on with the Iwo Jima. And what I'll do is then is I'll put up two parts of this a week to get us up to it and I'll put up the Iwo Jima straight away. So I don't think you're gonna be hanging around and waiting on. So you're gonna be in for a bit of luck. There should be sort of four or five hours a week going up now for the next couple of weeks and then we can get on with some new projects. But I have to say, <clears throat> 
I am actually in awe of this kit. I know I waited so long for it, and sometimes you wait so long and it's a little bit disappointing, um, but you know, you think this was first mentioned, what, over 10 years ago, um, and uh, you, the technology they've taken with it. So I don't think it's just sat on a dusty shelf uh, waiting to be sort of stamped out. It's actually been improved, things have been learned, and certainly the way it goes together. And considering it's quite a complex kit, the way it all happens, um, I did some test fitting with the wings, things like that. They fit absolutely perfectly. You know, you put the little tabs in, you can stick the wings on, <coughs> excuse me, uh, and away you go and everything just fits like a complete and utter gem so if you do want to do an intruder okay perhaps not to the extent i'm going to with it but you will have a fantastic out of the box build no problems at all although i do now know the resin cockpit has come out for this and having seen pictures of it the seats i would replace the seats probably not by the cockpit because there isn't that much detail that you couldn't put in yourself like we did, okay, to speed this up. So you could save yourself a little bit of money there. But I have seen the details for the new versions coming out of this, the E versions coming out and the tram as well um, in 48th uh, via Hobby Boss and in 32nd via Trumpeter as well. So really looking forward to those. So the other things we were talking about obviously last week was new things happening on the forum and everything else. And one of the big things I asked for is a little bit of a shout out for to see your work areas and your man caves and everything else like this. First up was our Ben uh, on the site, Ben Davis, uh, one of our younger modelers and a real, real talent. Um, he's gonna have a great future. If he carries on modeling the way he is, he's gonna be an absolute master modeler by the time he's sort of our age and everything else. So here is Ben showing you around his man cave. Hello, my name is Ben Davis. I'm from Chatteris, which is in Cambridgeshire, in the east of England. Um, I've been a member of Flory Models for three and a bit years now, and I've loved every minute of it. Uh, I think it does live up to its name as the best uh, internet forum. Uh, yeah, the best internet forum on the internet. Uh, uh, I. My main hobbies really are modelling, uh, obviously, and I'm also uh, a member of the Air Training Corps or Air Cadets, and that takes up a big part of my life as well, so that's really good. Um, basically, I've been modelling now for oh dear, a long time, uh, about six years or so. Uh, I was introduced to it as a young child, joined the Airfix Club, um, then sort of lost interest in it, went over to cars instead of modelling. Um, then while clearing out the house about six or seven years ago, I found some old kits which were given to me by the Airfix Club and I thought, that seemed alright, I'll have another go at that. and. My first kit was the old Airfix Harrier GR3 and it's spurred on from there and here we are today in this shed outside full of lovely models to build and lots of equipment and bits and pieces. Um, I mainly built, well I started off mainly building aircraft, mostly World War II. Um, I've now sort of, still, I still enjoy my aircraft, I still enjoy that era but I've now sort of tried to develop it, do a little bit of World War One, a little bit more modern stuff. But especially, I really, really enjoy armour building. Uh, some of my builds have gone, have been on the site, and some of I've, some of that I've had very nice comments on. So thank you. Uh, but especially over the last year, year and a half or so, I've really got into figure building, which I really, really enjoy. I know some people will stay away from it, uh, but I sort of dabbled with it, kind of enjoyed it, bought a couple more and I've really started to hone the skills and I really like it because really, they build really really quickly, same as armour, they can, you can build one together and you can focus on what I enjoy most about the hobby which is painting and weathering. Um, so that's that. So I'm going to grab the camera now and I'm going to give you a quick tour of my man cave. Right guys, so this is the, the shed, uh, so this is my man cave, uh, so um, my main workbench is here, uh, this is an old piece of kitchen top on a wooden frame, nice and strong, cutting mat, A2 cutting mat, um, this is where I do all my building, painting, um, 
everything here. I don't have a specific area for building, a specific area for painting, that sort of thing. Um, on the this is my part of the entry for my silver screen group build, which will be up on the forum soon. So that's that. Um, up the top there, pin board just to get some instructions and stuff off the off the um, off the, the bench when I'm working saves me having to ferret through everything to try and find them. Over here just to hand some um, old sanding sticks that are a bit worn out. Good for little jobs if I'm going to do anything else I'll get my main sanding stuff out. Going through glues, some uh, Mr. Hobby S, Ham uh, Ambroid Pro World, some Crystal Clear, there's some other bits and pieces in there like some of the old Humble glues and bits and pieces. Here we got Squadron Green, some home mixes using filler and cellulose thinners and some Mr. Surfacer up there. Varnishes, extra acrylics, gloss and flat, Tamiya gloss and flat, um, Model Master gloss lacquer uh, and some Vallejo that's uh, matte gloss and satin. Up the top Vallejo's decal fix and uh, some micro set and sole and some liquid mask in the corner. Here all my glue, so some accelerator, some debonder, some odorless super glue and some normal zapper gap. 6, 10, 18mm and 40mm Tamiya tape used for all my masking. Up the top some cellulose thinners, uh, Vallejo's two sets of Vallejo primer, Vallejo airbrush and thinner, B Q um, brush cleaner, metalizer sealer and some more cellulose thinners up there. Down the bottom assortment of quite terrible brushes cocktail sticks, screwdrivers and bits and pieces, some pipettes, pencils and that kind of stuff for marking stuff out, uh, cotton buds and there's some odds and sods at the back of there. Moving across, well this is my air, two airbrushes of choice in the compressor, uh, so we've got the Harder and Steenbeck Evolution 0.2 needle and a BD186, not sure the company but uh, came with it as a compressor set 0.3 needle in that but that can go all the way up to 0.8 with a 13mm cup that's quite uh, quite handy um, down the bottom so spare parts and decal tray spare parts are spread out to two, two drawers now down the bottom just sort of pots, cups empty pots for mixing things in making up some plaster of Paris or something if I was doing dioramas and bits and pieces like that that's sort of overflow of my uh, shelf of doom down the bottom there and up the top here is on my sort of works in progress which some are on the forum some are sort of my own little builds that I'm just doing in the background over here are some drawers this is basically where I keep bits and pieces while I'm working so it's parts of the figure there um, bits and pieces from other models and bits and pieces like that they've just that's just got elastic bands in elastic bands some of the um, knitting elastic that Phil suggested for World War One rigging so when I get round to doing a couple of mine some of the ta Tamiya weathering sets, these are for the flesh, these are flesh tone ones which I use for when I'm painting figures. Um, here sort of surplus cocktail sticks, set of drills and some surplus uh, Tamiya tape. Up here are J2O, actually they're all J2O, um, bottle caps which I've collected over time. Basically use those for holding super glue and little bits of paint while I'm building. Um, rather than you know knocking up a whole pot of it and wasting it I've also got this little pot thing which I do the same thing for and in the top of there are pegs that's that um, basically well this actually is an overflow of the stash this this bits here but all of that stuff up that's all my shelf of doom which I really need to get round to because it's overflowing obviously uh, 
stash goes all the way around there and up there and all the way around there and down there that's all the stash don't so don't sort of have a preference of like companies and a particular theme I basically collect them because I'm interested in them or whether or pretty much mostly for me it's the, if the price is right I will wait to get something or I will choose something else that I might not go for before because it's a better price than something I want if that makes sense so I've got a mixture I've got some old uh, matchbox stuff one of the Revel Lynxes, some AFV stuff, Great Wall Hobbies, then one of the new uh, Airfix uh, Harriers, Tamiya F16, uh, the Canberra back there, there's some other bits and pieces, a couple of Airfixes on the big 170 seconds, so there's the Concord and the Nimrod, uh, Airfixes 124th Harrier, Hobby Bosses Spitfire, some figures up there which I'll get round to hopefully soon. Uh, another that's Tammy uh, no Trumpeters 132nd P47 Hobby Bosses A and 2 Colt some of my armour which I quite some of these I'm looking forward to that kit similar to the uh, the Challenger uh, kit that Phil reviewed about a year ago now really nice kit that AFE Scorpion, there's some modern armour there, so M113, Challenger and AES90. was going to do that for the support SIG but doesn't fit with the rules unfortunately, so I'll be doing that one when I get round to it. Over here some more 30 seconds, so Edward's um, 109, uh, Dragon's P51 and Hasegawa's Hellcat. There's some other bits and pieces there, so I generally don't have a, a preference for anything. I just I'll grab it if I like it. If that makes sense. Stereo for music while I'm working. Other odds and sods. So I've got metalizers. I've got the flooring models washes. I've got some uh, sort of static grass and bits and pieces like that. Uh, I've got some of the AK interactive enamel weathering sets. Uh, I've got some odds and sods and bits and pieces and in here scratch balloon stuff there's plastic card old bits of uh, photo etch uh, spare clear parts and that's about it really and in here is the tools so oil paint and bits and pieces like that needle files uh, calipers re riveters scribing tools sanding range so sanding pads polishes polishing set um, sanding sticks sanding sponges ski range tools pea cutters razor saws all that cutters benders everything's in that bit knives are in here spare blades and some screwdrivers and other bits and pieces and then paint store so most predominantly Tamiya and Vallejo um, we've got all the, obviously all the black tops of model air white tops of model colour Tamiya uh, got a range there and when I run out in here I've got two boxes of um, Tamiya paint there when we're having a clear out at work so pretty much that's the stash and that's the man cave I hope you've enjoyed it and I look forward to seeing you and your work on the forum thanks a lot guys and bye bye so thank you Ben there's um, a couple of others um, Dan has put his up on the forum as well so you can go and see it now members um, they're up in that section that we've put in there for the forum um, and his will be up next week so remember guys if you put them up I'm quite happy to bung them up on the news show one a week because it is a great insight to see how you know I know I've got this bloody great setup here and everything else but it's nice to see where you guys work and how you do it as well and the fantastic projects and remember show your models as well we want to see your work as well so don't just about your man cave show us some of your bits some of your you know the bits you're really proud of and you want to show off and I'm quite happy to put them here on the show so you can probably see it my latest addition is a palm tree no it's not it's a rotary airbrush stand now for years um, I had one airbrush okay that I used to work with 
I don't talk about it because it's like hush tones. It's like the devil's airbrush as far as I'm concerned. Okay. Um, and that was the Aztec 490. It's horrible. It's a plastic thing. It's and it's a good job they came with a lifetime guarantee. That's all I'll say, you know, because I used to break them every couple of months. They would snap. Uh, and I felt that the way the nozzle was designed and everything else, but back then I didn't know any different. And it's when I used to do commission work, so we're talking pre-2000, okay? Um, and I used to work with it and everything else, but I just had that one airbrush. When that airbrush broke on me again, as it always did, okay? Took it back to the shop. They didn't have one in, in the shop to replace it with. This is the days when you could go to your local shop, you know, unlike now you'd have to send it away. Um, but anyway, um, the only thing they had in the shop was this thing, which they didn't even know what it was. Um, and it was called a company called Harder and Steamboat. They're a German company um, and they weren't so sure about it. And they said, look, you know, have a go with it. Let us know how you get on with it uh, and everything else like that. So that is my legendary Evolution 2-in-1, uh, which back in the day I paid, if I remember correctly, £65 for. Bearing in mind, this is around about 2000 all right? So it's 13 years old, this airbrush. Um, and from the second I pulled the trigger for the first time, I fell in love with it. It was a fantastic airbrush. It's a great design. It was so much easier to use. Uh, oh, and cleaning, things like that. It was just an absolute gem. Okay, and it's... Although it's not, don't get me wrong, okay, the Aztec for, um, is it the 470 or the 490? I had the plastic one, they do a metal version of it as well, which I think is the 90, I think mine was the 470. Anyway, um, the way that the nozzles are designed, I think it, it does work, but it's not as clean and it's easy, because apparently you're not supposed to take them apart, but you had to. So this was almost like moving to like a real airbrush, okay, my first proper airbrush. And that's what it was and as i said it just worked it was brilliant i pulled the trigger and every time pain came out okay the other one sometimes you used to have to play with it a bit cleaning it up used to be blow it through and that was it and the next day it would work again no problem at all and i really fell in love with it and to be honest i have spoken about it with you guys at length and showed you this airbrush and the reasons that i love it and everything else and i i really have championed this airbrush now for the last 14 years um, and I know a lot of you have fell in love with it um, and the key features I like about it are like having the nozzle where it's a separate nozzle and it's a big part so you don't end up brain, you know, breaking it like you do with the eye water, things like that. Um, you know, I think a lot of you guys sort of agreed with me about the ease of use and the pricing isn't too bad either. It's on par with everybody else's these days. But there was a, a few little things I didn't like about it. First of all, a lot of you noticed this end bit here, this nozzle that I have on the end, um, that isn't a standard piece, okay? That is, I just retract the needle before I break it. This here is from another airbrush called the Infinity, which we'll talk about in a moment, okay? The one it standard comes with is this one, which I did have to dig out, okay? Which is your standard sort of cone type. And it was quite nice because you used to be able to take the tip off and I used to show airbrushing. If you look at my really early work, I never had the guard on the end because I find these bung up with paint, especially when you're flooding acrylics and using very thick acrylic paints. They just fill up with paint and before you know it, you're spitting and stuff like that. And it's all caused by this. So what happened was I went off and bought myself for Christmas, um, many years later, this particular one. Now, this is the Infinity. This comes with a two-prong cap. And from the minute I use the two-prong cap, because it's so easy to clean, because you just pinch clean, it doesn't get any real build-up on it either. And also, you can see the build-up, so you can give it a clean every time you see it, okay? The key features on it, obviously, you can lock the distance of how much pull you have on paint and everything else. You've got a little thing in here as well, a little wheel where you can adjust the sort of sensitivity of it. Um, so between, you can adjust the sensitivity on the air stem about the trigger pull how tight it is and you can do this one here to sort of affect it how it is between the two you can really sort of customize it to your way of thinking but the first thing I did was buy a replacement needle set for this particular airbrush and then remove this horrible end on it okay and then fitted it with this one okay and then this one goes in here and it gives you all those key features of the cleaning and everything on this particular airbrush and it just made a world of difference really really nice now a few things happened you guys all went out and you thought oh that's great you can't just buy the end you have to do the entire thing also depending on the end I don't know how well this will show on camera hopefully it will if I just drop this top camera down you can see it this nozzle set here you have in two flavors so I have two here 
because I have the two in one from the Evo. One is the four mil, so hopefully you guys can see this, and one is the two. So when you look at the holes, and I say, I don't know how well this is going to work, but when you look at the two holes in here, you may be able to see this one on this side is a lot bigger. This is designed for the bigger uh, needles that go through. So i.e. you need a bigger entire back section, this the area here, okay, to do this, because this is for anything from 0.4 to 0.6, okay, and 0.8. They all use this one. This one over here is for the 0.15, which I think is a little bit too thin for acrylic painting, more for inks that, or the 0.2. Okay, so important thing to remember, if you're doing it and you've got like a point, a bigger needle set, what happens is, is it, it just won't work, okay? So that's the thing with that. Anyway, I'm getting slightly off track here because what happened recently was, is that a brand new airbrush came onto the market. Now this said airbrush, I'm just putting this back together whilst I know which order they all go in, okay? This new airbrush was slightly different in it is a lightweight which is this one here Let me just that back a little bit which is this one here which is called the AL plus now I don't know if it's made of, of um, uh, aluminium or what the AL actually stands for but it could be something something light because the good thing about this here if we just open this up is it's in black which does look very very nice okay it is the evolution, so it's the same as this one here, but the biggest thing you will notice straight off the bat is when you hold this in your hand, this has no weight to it whatsoever. It weighs, and I've had to write this down, a whopping, he says writing it down, he didn't, but I'm sure it was 56 grams. It is, I've written down on the other side, okay? So this airbrush, and I can tell you, if you hold this in your hand here, has absolutely no weight to it at all. And I thought it was plastic, but it's not. It is metal, but it's extremely thin. But this is the big difference with this one. This is their new lightweight airbrush, and I have to say, it is incredibly light. Um, there is no weight to it at all. In fact, it's very hard to know you've got it in your hand. Now, I haven't painted with this, it's something we're gonna do in a minute, but a quick breakdown is, you can see here, we've got the Evo, if I just change my tops to make them look the same. Great thing with all the harder and steamer airbrushes is they're all interchangeable with each other, okay? So you can take color cups from each other, you can take needles from each other. They're all a similar modular design. So, first thing you notice when you put them next to each other, they are exactly the same size. The big difference is this one comes with this two point prong needle which the Evolution doesn't, okay? Which is what we were saying, is a very, very nice touch. It's a great system um, and it's easier to clean, which is one of the bugbears I always said with the Evolution because I felt it just, it was let down. It needed to spend 35 quid on a needle set to get this thing on the front. This one actually comes with it. You don't get the rubbers around the mid, edge like you do in this one. It still comes with a quick di uh, disconnect and everything else, okay? And it, obviously all the internals are exactly the same, let me just hoof this out the back, as the others, and it's all totally comes apart. Apart from the big thing you notice is, you can see the white rings down here, these come everywhere standard with the Teflon rings on them, okay? So that just makes everything a lot easier. You don't have to worry about obviously using lacquer paints, things like that. They're not gonna melt as you go through. But disassembly is exactly the same as you can see to, let me pop this one down here, the Evolution, so we just hoof the needle off, off the back, okay? And a color cut. As you can see, they all come apart exactly the same. But the big thing is when you hold the parts, they are just so, so light. And that is it, that's quite a hefty lump. This one here, although it's got a little bit of weight to it, because obviously it's got standard internals, this ring area obviously is separate. Now I know what you're thinking, you're probably thinking, but what about things like the balance? Uh, does it still feel the same in the hand and just as comfortable? Or is it too light and you can't really feel it? Okay, let me just pop this in the back. I can actually confirm that it is perfectly in balance. It weighs very, very nice. Um, I think it's probably the reason 
uh, you'd use the two mil color cuppies to keep your weight down, but I have had a fiddle, as I say, I haven't actually used it, but I did have a fiddle and pop in the uh, bigger uh, five mil color cup, which is this one. And it still feels very nice. Okay, increases the weight a little bit, but it's not pulling the nose down and all the rest of it. The thing you notice is when you snap the trigger, it's, it sounds not as nice as when you're doing something like the Infinity, okay? The Infinity, it feels very chunky, it feels solid. This one doesn't, but a lot of that is, obviously I think because it's extremely lightweight design, it doesn't have that solid feel because of the weight uh, of it being very, very light. But generally, I can't fault it in any way from this point of view, it is absolutely stunning. So if we pop this guy back on the top and get us back where we were. We need to pop these guys together because what we'll do now we'll fire them up and have a direct comparison now i know what you're thinking probably like i was how much is it all okay if you wanted to pick up my all-time favorite airbrush which is my evolution if i'm honest for the money this what evolution will set you back as a solo and by a solo what that means is it comes with a 0.2 needle okay let's get the color cup in it comes with a 0.2 needle, it comes with a standard bezel, if we make them up to the correct. It comes just like that. This particular one will set you back at £95, okay, including that in the UK. You might be able to pick it up cheaper online, various stores, things like that, I'm not sure, but that's the standard sort of price for it around at the moment. It's a great piece of kit, go out and buy it. The only thing you will need to do, as I said, is buy a needle set. So the cheapest and best way to do it is buy yourself the 0.2 needle set for the Infinity and retrofit it onto your Evolution and then use the Evolution bits as a backup just in case you ever need them, things like that, and away you go. Okay, the Evolution AL, now hold your horses on this one, will set you back £155 for the solo version. So again, it just comes with a 2mm needle, 0.2mm needle, the 2mm colour cup, okay, and a quick release on there just like that. All right, if you wanted to do the Infinity, okay, which again has got all singing, all dancing on the back, it's going to set you back £165. So that's the bit where you're slightly different, okay? You can have an Evo with a front end on for it, or you can have an Infinity with all the bits that go with this one and all the rest of it for an extra tenner. So from this point of view, I think I would go for an Infinity and spend another 10 pounds. If you wanted the dual version, that comes with two needles, okay? The bigger color cup, the color cup lids, the quick release and everything else, okay? So technically you get an entire second needle set with it, as we were saying, so you get the two prongs, front end cap, the air cap, the needle as well. For the Infinity is 205. For the um, uh, Evolution AL, for the lightweight, that was, is also 205. Or you can have it as the Evolution down here, but again, remember, you have to change the nozzles on it, so I wouldn't bother, um, is a whopping, uh, where are we, 130 pounds. All right, but you're gonna spend another 35 quid changing it over, so depending on which way you want to do it. So there we go, that's your basics on the airbrushes. Let's get them fired up and see what we can do. Okay then, so we have, let me airline out, <clears throat> we'll talk about my tree in a minute. But we have our standard clicks on with an airbrush on it. To be honest, it's the first time with an airline on it. It feels pretty good. Okay, it's the first time it's got air through it. And obviously I've got a little Mac valve just down the bottom here. So we can change the pressure just by dialing it in directly down the bottom. Feels pretty good, still very light. It's not putting any weight considering we've got a quick detach and a little Mac valve down here at the bottom. All in all, very, very nice. So we're gonna use Vallejo straight out of the bottle. So we're gonna try it as is. This is one of their newer colors, um, which is the US Air Force medium gray. 120. The only thing it has got in it, as you can hear, is a nut which has been washed in some soapy water, rinsed and let to dry, as I put into all my Vallejo paints now. I'm finding it works so much better because you can actually get the proper mix in off the bottom where you can do it before. Okay, so in my famous Bob Ross style, we're just going to add a few old drops down here to Mr. Little Old Brush. The first thing you do notice, um, if I'm honest, is um, you can't feel it in your hand. 
you feel the drag of the airline, but you can't feel the airbrush. Now, if I was using my Evo, to be honest, it, it is quite, I should have done the drop test with you, but when you drop this, it's you know you've dropped it. This thing, I don't think you would. Um, because of its lightness, it feels fragile. Um, and I know, you know, you guys who I've, you've been here for the training and I've trained you using an airbrush will know, I always say, treat it, um, you know, like you stole it type thing. Don't be frightened of it, it's a tool, it's a brush. I've got a slight sort of nervousness to it because it's got no weight. It feels quite fragile in the hand. Um, that's the only thing I would say with it. All right, so what we're gonna do, we'll just do a quick spray test on a sheet down here. So as I said, I haven't got tons in here. Straight away, straight through. The only thing I haven't done, which I would recommend, is put some acrylic airbrush cleaner through it first before you start spraying. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna go straight in. And I have to say, it is nice. That is no different from using the Infinity or the Evo with the other bits on there. I can't tell the difference. The only thing you really do notice is that it's not waiting. You know, um, as I say, again, if, if you watch a lot of my work, you'll see how I tend to do it. I tend to do it sort of that double pistol grip thing. So I have one hand down on the surface, one on the top, and I'm spraying like this. I'm actually finding that it, there's, there's no weight, so it's slightly a little bit alien. I'm expecting the weight of the airbrush to be sort of going round. It has no weight. The only thing I can feel is the airline is tugging a little bit down here, all right? Now I've got it obviously dropped down the side of me and it's pulling down, perhaps if you had it on a, a slight catch, but certainly from the usual, this say this is the point two in here, and you can really get down and do some very fine detail if you wanted to it. Or you could come in and do some nice speckling. If we just up the air pressure just a little bit. Okay, it's got great coverage from wide. I don't really want to spray me desk, but if you want to crank it up and go for it, you could cover anything. As I say, the 0.2 millimeter um, needle set on these, I think is perfect for scale modeling. And don't forget, I do everything from huge Bloody great stuff to tiny little things um, and as I say you can go from that to that without changing anything at all you're not doing anything the thing you do have to remember is you do have variable air pressure on the top so don't forget depending on how you push down here so if we just push a little bit you get a little bit the more you push the more air you get so if you've cranked it up so you can just do a little bit or a little bit down so after you've been playing with these a while you tend to you know, you can lower your air pressure as you spray and go down. So if you wanted to lower your thing and do some speckling work, like this, it's quite easy to go between the two. Let's say we're getting a little bit heavy on there now. But even without changing the air pressure, I can do some very nice, extremely sharp painting with it without any problems. And I must admit, now I've used it just literally for a few minutes. I've sort of used to the weight now. It hasn't got that thing. Again, because you've got this two nozzle thing, and don't forget you can revolve the prongs so they're pointing towards you so you can see them. Anytime you get any build up, you just come along and you pinch clean the end and you clean the needle totally off and you're ready to go again. So we just turn the air pressure down a little bit. It's a bit more manageable. Okay, or if we want to do some, some painting in, we want to do some bigger stuff. As I say, I think it really does work very, very well. You know, you can just do some light work. Okay, and you'd have no problem with that at all. You've got great control, just as you can with the Infinity or the Evo with it. It's just literally a lot, lot lighter. Now, the lightness. Okay, if you're gonna be spending 12 hours a day on the end of an airbrush, the lightness would really make a big, big difference to you. Um, I think if, you know, you've got uh, problems with your hands, things like that. It may be nicer because it's a lot lighter airbrush and things like that. To be honest, I've got trouble with my finger. I call it RSI. Um, 
it wouldn't really affect it but if you've got something like your lower fingers because you're not holding on to all that weight it is very very nice it does take a little bit of getting used to though if i'm honest but you can see down here you could do any type of pattern work anything whatsoever is it worth the money if i'm honest and somebody said to me what would you do i would go out and buy into infinity i wouldn't bother with that i'm not that worried about the weight if i'm honest um do I, you know, it's not a game changing airbrush or anything else like that. I don't think it's going to be one of those which is going to suddenly sort of change the way we're all airbrushing and things. It's just a lot, lot lighter. I think if you're, as I say, going to be using an airbrush for hours on end and things like that, then perhaps you might want to consider going for a lighter one. It's just that it's a lot of money. Uh, for what it is. When you're talking, you can go out and get an, uh, an Infinity with all the gubbins on the back, that, you know, for this. You can, if you want to, buy the back section, this back section that goes uh, on the Infinity as a version like it, which you can put onto this, okay? Because it's the standard one that goes onto the Evolution, so it's gonna fit on this one as well. Um, I'm, you know, I'm just a little bit torn. I can't see the point of paying that much money for an airbrush that is really, really light. You know, I would say go for your infinity and do it that way. It's not changing my opinion on this. I think it's a, it's a very nice piece of kit, you know, and I've gone out and bought it. This is my money on this. No discount, no nothing, you know, but I wanted to get it because I wanted to see what it's like. But I think, you know, the biggest difference is, is when you're doing with this one, with this one, you know, that is it. It's, there is a massive difference between the two. It is a totally different ball game. This thing is just so much lighter. So I think really you're paying what? I don't know, because you've got the infinity with all the bits and pieces on it. I reckon you're gonna be, you are paying roughly, um, with the nozzle sets to say 30 quid. Um, so I was just looking at me things down here. So 30, you're paying around about, 35 pounds just to have it lighter um so if you're you know that's the way you want to do it and everything else and you like the lightness of it um and things like that then obviously you know go out and buy it but certainly from my point of view i would say go with an infinity you've got all the features on the back end that you might want to use you might not want to but at least you've got them there and this is their top of the range version one other thing cr somebody asked me the other day what's the difference between a cr plus and an infinity um, it's um, this one here is a standard infinity and it's nickel okay now the thing is if you're um, a bit sensitive on the old skin thing um, you might suddenly turn start swelling up or something um, getting a rash and it's because you're allergic to the nickel uh, that these are coated in as you can see inside my color cup that are all like this i have no nickel left on the inside the cr are chrome plated so you pay a little bit extra for chrome plating so you shouldn't have that trouble where they all change color because all of mine are like it now um, but you might notice as well some of you guys your end ones down here you've gone through it same thing it's just the same as the color cup um, amazingly i haven't somehow but if you have it may be that you know you've got a little bit of reaction Action to it things like that you sweat up here's a little bit more uh, and that's the reason for it so CR just means they're triple coated chrome finished okay versus your normal version and you pay a little bit extra for it but not much personally if I was I'll go with a CR and have it chrome plated and that way it won't lose its color but again they're great airbrushes they've been using them for absolute ages so anyway this thing here is my new palm tree as I call it now the reason for this is is we're starting up with our um, airbrushing uh, courses uh, again here at Flory Models so this year we'll be having more of you in for this and this just makes it easier now the great thing with this thing is it's rotary so it spins round you've got an air dial down the bottom here which spins to anybody can look at what pressure you're on it's a little bit of a false economy it's telling you what pressure the system is on not what it is because each individual station has got one of these and it's got a little um, uh, tap on it which you can up and down your air pressure so if you're using a station to be honest I should have prepared this but I've got lots of air hoses here with things on let me get one off let's get one of the shorter ones I have down here you can probably see on this side we've got four uh, quick detach hoses on here so what it is you come along with your hose you plug yourself in 
you grab your air pressure your choice and I have all mine fitted with Mac valves as well and you're ready to go off and start spraying and then what you can do is you can dial in what pressure you want personally I've got them on the Mac valve but if you haven't then you can then put the air pressure you want in here and away you go you can plug in to it it's a central reservoir type so don't think it's on a system where um, it's like one in and then what do we got on here one two three four five six seven out technically it's one in six out all right so hence whilst you've got six stations up above here for plugging in all your airbrushes personally what i will will be doing with mine is i'm going to put two compressors into this okay use two going in and then we'll have the rest coming out because i do think with one on there if you've got six people using it it's just going to drain it off and nobody's going to have any air pressure at all but you have got a little dial on here which can tell you and it's quite cute because you can have all your airbrushes on a nice rotary stand just like this and it's a nice workstation so when we get going with all of this and we have you all down here it'll sit nicely in the middle oh it's on suckers as well so stop it you know vibrating around it can sit down here you can have one or two airlines coming in from it sit down you just grab your airbrush and you can start spraying and when if you want to lock off you can turn it completely off down here or you can do it up there so now i've got six airbrushes with this one it goes on there just like that so the price of one of those is around about £35. I bought this one off of eBay, if I'm honest, uh, and goes through. So there we go. That's a little bit about airbrushing. That's the new AL Plus, which is still weird when you pick it up. It's like, it, I'll tell you what it's like, right? It's when you go into your mobile phone shop and they've got all the dummies and you pick them up and you expect it to be heavy and it's suddenly not. That's how that feels, okay? But as I said, I, I'm really torn between um, if I like it or not. I like it as an airbrush because it's an Evo with a point on it. So it's no different from, you know, mine here when I have my proper end on the end of it uh, and away you go. So from that point of view, it's good. It looks nice in black, but I reckon in black it'll get filthy and horrible and probably not nice after very, very long at all. And having it in the nickel or you can have this one triple plated chromed as well. Um, you, you could have it like that. So it's just a lot of money. And for an extra 10 quid, you can have the infinity and the more I've sitting here thinking about it I'd have an infinity every single time over you know basically a lightweight um, Evo but as I said if you all got problems with your hands if you want a very very lightweight airbrush this thing in all honesty they say is half the weight I would even think it's lighter than half the weight it's a shame I've got any digital scales to show you but it is over half the weight of a standard Evo okay or an infinity or a standard airbrush 36 uh, 56 grams that's all it is so as you say and it comes with standard you got your point two in there it's just it's a hundred and I think with the postage I've been paid another three pound fifty postage on top uh, and everything else so it's just quite a lot of money for a lightweight airbrush versus as I say you could go out and get yourself a, um, a triple chrome plated uh, infinity for the same money so I think I'm gonna stick with my infinity so if you're asking me get yourself an infinity uh, and uh, have it all like that so there we go, airbrushing. Um, I know I'm gonna get inundated with questions now about the courses we run. Basically we do a one day course or we do a weekend course on airbrushing. It'll be the same as last year. Um, the dates will be up. Um, I'll put them up onto the main site as well as the forum. Members will obviously get priority for booking your space here. We have many, many local hotels and B&Bs, everything around us. Um, for you guys who have been here, you'll know it anyway. And we have some nice pubs and we normally have a meal out on the Saturday night as well. So that's us really for this week. Um, I'm gonna catch up with the forum next week properly. You seemed all to love the great work we had yesterday, uh, yesterday last week with the Centurion tank. So here's another absolute blinding build, absolutely stunning with us on this one. So I'm gonna leave you with, this is Stephen McEwen's absolutely stunning Hasegawa, um, what is it? It's a 190 D9, it's the stretch nose version for the Butcher Bird SIG that's running at the moment. So until next week, everybody, happy modeling and take care.